Hello and welcome to this week's Citizens Climate University. It's a weekly webinar program of Citizens Climate Lobbies that provides CCL supporters like you and I with access to in-depth training opportunities on topics related to climate change and effective climate advocacy. I'm your host, Brett Cease, and tonight we're going to provide a brief introduction to clean energy permitting reform. We're going to have the chance in this training to cover one of the parts of CCL's policy agenda, clean energy permitting reform, and provide an overview about why this is an important policy area for addressing climate change, as well as what types of policies CCL is planning on supporting. So if we've done our job well, our three learning goals really are to help you as a listener understand what clean energy permitting reform really means and why it's important to our organization. We'll also explore its benefits and why it's included in CCL's expanded policy agenda. And we'll learn from Tony about what reforms CCL supports and how CCL is planning on engaging in that process. So with us tonight is our wonderful speaker, Tony Cerna. Tony is CCL's Vice President of Organizational Strategy, where he helps us as an organization think strategically about long range planning, clarifying organizational priorities and maximizing our effectiveness at achieving widespread climate solution goals. Our agenda tonight is going to be really straightforward. Tony is going to go over why this topic is important, as well as addressing some of the main concerns around it and identifying types of policies CCL supports, as well as how we will engage. At the very end, also review where you can go for more information. Thanks, Brett. Clean energy permitting reform is part of our policy agenda because it's time to build America's clean energy economy. Permitting reform will make that possible by unlocking clean energy infrastructure that's waiting to be built and by getting that clean energy to American households and businesses. Permitting reform is critical if we're going to make the clean energy transition happen fast enough to meet our climate targets. If we don't start building clean energy infrastructure faster, we will only achieve about 20% of the potential carbon reduction from climate policy that is already in place, specifically with the Inflation Reduction Act of 2022. We've got to speed up the pace with which we build new clean energy projects, but our current permitting process makes that tough. For example, it takes an average of 4.5 years for federal agencies to complete environmental impact statements for major energy projects. These are important assessments, but we need them to move faster. We need to quickly increase our clean electricity transmission capacity. In the past decade, the US has expanded our electricity transmission infrastructure at a pace of just 1% per year. We have to speed that up. Ultimately, we need to triple our current capacity to transmit clean electricity by 2050. New clean energy projects rely on building new long distance transmission lines, a process which currently takes 10 years on average. People sometimes raise concerns about making changes to our permitting process because they worry that it may prevent communities and organizations from having their voices heard in the process. CCL agrees that permitting reform should be done in a way that empowers communities to weigh in on what projects happen in their area. Communities should be able to give input to address environmental and other impacts in a streamlined process. CCL also recognizes that there's political realities of our democratic system, which forces compromise among lawmakers who have a range of priorities. As we begin to work on this issue, we will evaluate any permitting reform proposals in the context of our principles outlined here, and we'll do our best to support options closest to our ideal approach. People also raise concerns that permitting reform could allow for new infrastructure that could cause harm to communities from pollution, especially in disadvantaged communities. CCL believes that permitting reform should be done in a way that minimizes the negative health impacts from air pollution and other pollution in frontline communities, where lives are already being lost due to pollution from fossil fuels. Climate policy already in place, specifically the IRA, could prevent up to 180,000 premature American deaths over the next decade by reducing air pollution. But if transmission build out is too slow, we may not fully realize the potential emission cuts from that policy. That means many thousands more premature deaths, mostly in disadvantaged communities near sources of pollution. Most of the new infrastructure proposed in the US right now is for clean energy. So making permitting easier will largely benefit clean energy projects. Reports from Lawrence Berkeley National Lab find that in 2021, 85% of new energy capacity was clean energy. More than 92% of new energy projects currently awaiting permits are solar and wind, with just 7.5% from natural gas. So CCL is supporting a variety of federal policies. Uh, we want policies that will add to America's capacity to transmit clean energy, that will speed up the approval of clean energy projects that are waiting to be built, and that allow communities to make their voices heard on the environmental and other impacts of proposed energy projects. On this topic of clean energy permitting reform, most of our engagement will be on the federal legislation. 
There may be opportunities to engage locally on issues related to the siting and permitting of clean energy projects, but we do not have the capacity to support volunteers in those efforts at this time. Also, due to the complexity of the issue, we do not envision doing significant grassroots recruitment or outreach on this topic, as it is not an easy entry point into climate advocacy for new people. Therefore, most of our advocacy in this area will be using the levers of political will, such as lobbying Congress, working in the media, and grass stops outreach. With that, back to you, Brett. All right. Well, thank you so much, Tony. Uh, that was incredibly helpful and a great summary of really what to expect with the basics. And if you are also looking for more information, we have an advanced training that's specifically called Clean Energy Permitting Reform Advanced Training. We'll put a link to that in our liner notes for this training. You could also search for CCL Community on that, where we have a whole host of additional frequently asked questions and many wonderful resources from other organizations that have been doing research on this for you to really deepen your understanding on this topic. So with that tonight, we hope that you found tonight's training useful. You're more than welcome to follow up with any questions you have in CCL's forums. Thank you so much for your advocacy across Climate Solutions, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks, everyone. Thank you for listening to this episode of Citizens Climate Lobby's training program. You can tune into more episodes anywhere podcasts are available. Inspired by what you heard today? Join Citizens Climate Lobby to advocate for bipartisan climate solutions. Go to community.citizensclimate.org to find more trainings, resources, your local chapter, national action teams, discussion forums, and more. Be sure to like our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Citizens Climate. We also invite all of our listeners to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more inspiration. Like what you hear? Recommend us to your friends and make sure to give us a five-star rating. It helps us show up on other listeners' feeds. Feel free to pass on any suggestions for future episodes in the comments as well. And together, we are creating the political will for a livable world.